Hi, I'm Alistair Cook, and in this video we'll be looking a little bit more at managing the Cohesity data management platform. This is part of a series of videos looking at my Cohesity Virtual Edition cluster, which is what you can see in front of us here. This cluster runs as a virtual appliance on top of my vSphere environment. If you want to see some details about deploying that, I've got a previous video about deploying the Virtual Edition. I'm also managing it through Helios, the central management console for multiple Cohesity clusters, if you have multiple clusters, and uh, that's just a convenience here. The only oddity about this is that I'm managing from a Raspberry Pi. So this is a Pi 3 running Raspbian and Buster, which is the newest release. Uh, being a Pi 3, there's going to be some slowdowns at times where things take a little while to complete. Don't worry, you won't have to wait for them. I'll speed those up when there's nothing going on. So here it is, my normal Cohesity cluster. But I'm not managing it from a Raspberry Pi because web-based management from a Raspberry Pi is cool. But actually, I started thinking about playing with a Raspberry Pi here when I was looking at the developer portal. And in particular, the link through to GitHub where the Cohesity repository on GitHub has this SDK for managing your Cohesity cluster using Python. Python's a multi-platform language. I could play with Python on my Mac. I've got some Python scripts running on my Mac. I've done Python scripting on Windows as well. But at the moment, most of my Python scripting takes place on a Raspberry Pi, so I thought I'd give this a try on a Raspberry Pi. Here's the SDK home directory. There's a whole bunch of information in here, but very importantly, there is a command line to install using the Python package manager pip. So I'm going to copy that command line and pop across into a terminal and just paste in that pip command line and have pip install the Cohesity Management SDK. So take a little while, I'll speed it up. Pip has installed the Cohesity Management SDK, and that's wonderful, but maybe I want to actually run some of the example scripts. And you can see back up here that under the samples directory, there's a whole heap of sample scripts. So I want to play with some of those, and the easiest way to play with the sample scripts is to just clone this entire repository. So we take that git clone command, we'll copy that, we'll pop that also into our prompt here, and then clone the entire repository, all of those files. And uh, then we can have a bit of a play around. So if we change directory into, it's not a capital M, uh, and into the samples folder inside there and take a look at the list of samples that are available. Let's start with a list. So let's have a look at the list underscore protection jobs. And what we can see in there is a uh, list protection jobs pi and a readme. If we pop back into GitHub, that's the easiest place to read the readme. So samples, list protection jobs, and the readme says, uh, I just run the Python script, but beforehand I need to make sure I'm connected to a cluster. So let's take a look at the contents of that Python script. Let's edit the list Python script. And we can see some declarations up the top here. So we have a declaration of a uh, cluster username. Now my cluster currently has the defaults of admin and password of admin. I'm going to manage this directly through the IP address because uh, the Raspberry Pi isn't connected to my lab network, it's connected to my home network. So we go to 192.168.20.22 and domain is local. So that's authentication on the cluster. Save those changes, and then we should be able to run Python and list protection jobs.py. And look at that, we have our four protection jobs. The same if we go into the console here and have a look at our data protection summary. Uh, let's do it through the data protection here. And that will see our jobs. And we can see four data protection jobs here. Uh, data view protection, Demitas, Outlook, and users view protection. Exactly the same 
through that we see in here. And we can see the last runtime of those jobs. No, we see the creation time. It's not the last runtime. Okay, what else have we got in here in the examples? Let's pop back up a folder, look into the examples directory. What else have we got? Protection run status. That looks interesting. Yeah, and again we need to do those directives at the front in order to change it. So if we go drop a directory, cd into protection run status, and then we again nano protection run status job. Now we should probably have a, uh, in, a way of globally using these um, getting these parameters into the scripts, although they are just samples. Oh, interesting. Uh, oh, domain is domain in this one, not defaulting to local. That's better. So we've got some protection runs that are successful today and, and yesterday, so that's the last 24 hours. Let's take a look at that Python script and see what we actually see in it. Take a look at the Python. We've got a uh, date time directive. We've got, so this is back in the original repository, not my modified version. I'm not seeing the place where we're limiting the protection run data return to just the last day but you know but I think a little opaque as to what we can actually do with this. What else we've got in the examples? Uh, list unresolved alerts. I wonder if I've got some unresolved alerts on my cluster. Let's take a look at that. This one's got our same order as the other list, so that's admin and admin, and then my cluster IP goes in, 192.168.20.22, save that. And <laughs> a few warnings going on. That will be related to the fact that I have had a power outage in my lab and as a consequence there are some alerts that came up. There's a, a bunch of alerts. Well, there's four alerts unresolved. Oh, well, Python samples seem to, to do to run. I think uh, it might be a, a little more work to, to find something more useful in here. I uh, should go back into the uh, samples again. Um, I think I might need to spend a bit more time playing with this in order to work out exactly uh, what I'd want to do with the Python SDK. But it does look like there's some interesting things that are available. So maybe uh, add VM to a protection and run that protection is a nice simple thing to do. And this one takes a list of VMs and a protection job name to add the VM to. So it looks like it could be fairly useful as part of a, a workflow that builds new virtual machines as well. So we've had a very quick look at using the Python SDK and happened to have done it using a Raspberry Pi. Nice and portable, nice and easy to work with. There is lots more great content around what Cohesity Platform does, what you can do with it uh, on my YouTube channel and also on the Demitas site. Thanks for joining me in this video and stay tuned for more educational content around the Cohesity Data Management Platform.